Okay, let's let's take a U-turn and talk about the positive psychology uh, movement. Can, can you talk a little bit about the origins of this movement? Because it's something that has uh, has only really come on the scene recently, I think, in the West at least. We've been far more focused on the dark side of the human mind in psychology than on the possibility of becoming much happier. So can you talk a little bit about the history of how positive psychology sort of cropped up? Sure. Um, you know, the, the, the precursor of positive psychology was really humanistic psychology, which is a really interesting, um, uh, really cool field in the 50s and 60s that I uh, really resonated with, uh, which was an attempt at uh, countering the ideas of people like Freud, um, who believed we're all we are are destructive and sexual impulses underneath everything, um, and the behaviorists who said that we're just uh, rats in a in, in a maze, you know, or a, a box. Uh, and the humanistic psychologist said there's more to humans. There's a, there's goodness, there's spirituality, there are higher values. There's a higher consciousness that can be goal directed and intentional. And we can lead the kind of lives we want to lead. Um, also responsibility taking was a big theme of the humanistic psychologist. So that, that's the precursor to modern day positive psychology, but Martin Seligman, um, uh, in particular, in, in 1998, when he was president of the American Psychological Association, um, made a call for a new field, the science of well-being, um, and he called it positive psychology. And it it spurred uh, a whole field of and lots of research in the field to look at um, and putting uh, on a scientific foundation lots of different aspects of understanding uh, well-being and well-being is a large umbrella. Well-being doesn't just include happiness. Well-being includes meaning in life. It includes positive relationships. It includes um, uh, engagement in your life and a sense of purpose, um, transcendence. So uh, so well-being is a very broad uh, construct, but people working in the field of positive psychology are really interested in scientifically testing uh, interventions to improve these things and to understand these things. So the aspect that I'm most familiar from with from experience is mindfulness meditation. It's it's something I've spent a lot of time doing and I've talked I talked about with Sam Harris a few episodes ago. Is is have you done mindfulness meditation at all? Um I have. I, I'm I'm very into mine. Don't you That's see right, the cushion? Right. Don't you see the cushion right there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And anyone yeah, could yeah. put up a cushion, but um, <laughs> um but no, I I I I'm very much into my into mindfulness meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and uh, increasingly so in 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 the world we're living in, especially as I like, I feel like I'm becoming more of a, I don't know if you've noticed this too, as you become more of a public figure that you need to up your meditation yeah. <laughs> numbers. <laughs> to up your dose. Yeah. I, I, found, I have found that to be the case in my own life just mm. in the, in the past year or so, I feel like, cause I'm uh, just not staying necessarily to the kinds of topics and things that, um, that I used to stay only to, um, mm. to just expand a bit and even get into the culture wars a bit. You know, I feel like I have to up my meditation, but no, I, I, I definitely, uh, think it can be extraordinarily helpful in seeing the one's mind accurately. Uh, but I think that, um, but people, a lot of people claim a lot of benefits from it that aren't scientifically validated. Mm. And, and not only that, but I, I wrote an article, I don't know if you read this article I wrote on spiritual narcissism. Did you read that? No, no, no um, I didn't, but I'm interested. But I'm interested. What is that? What is that? Yeah, so I wrote this article um, summarizing a lot of recent research, um, showing that a lot of people um, in the in the spiritual realm who have a lot of mindfulness meditation and yoga uh, practice, um, they can start to um, have the "I'm in more enlightened than you" effect, mm-hmm. um, where they start to act as though they're uh, they're above other humans in some sort of superiorly narcissistic sort of way because they they have that experience. And, um, I tried to argue against that and argue that's not, that's, that's not the point of meditation, <laughs> you know, med- meditation, it, like it's good enough for me if meditation is allowing me to just see myself more clearly, or even just real to realize I don't even have a self, you know, but just to, just to, um, become more, uh, in touch, um, with this, the reality of, of my thoughts and, uh, my patterns of thoughts and, um, and just how much I'm being led by them. Um, when I am unthinking about it to me, that's good enough, you know, but people are claiming all sorts of benefits from mindfulness. Mm. Yeah. I, I remember at the end of one of my retreats, 
one that was particularly difficult. I think it was like seven or eight days. And uh, they, they asked that you give up your phone, but I couldn't do it. Uh, and my, my whole experience, it was, it was very useful, but it was extremely difficult. And I remember coming away from it thinking not that I was more enlightened, but just astounded at how difficult it was for me to not have a thought for even 10 seconds, right? The, the sense was I'm, I'm now noticing more and more how terrible I am at this skill, this skill that I know is, is very useful. But I remember at the end of the retreat, once we could talk again, uh, I had a conversation with this woman and she said, she said, wow, I feel, she said something along the lines of, I feel like I'm amazing at doing this and I can't believe that other people can't do this. And I came away, I remember I I said to her, really, I feel the exact opposite. I feel now more than ever how astoundingly average and mundane my own mind is. I completely agree. I would even go so far and say like, if, if I meditate long enough, I, 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 I think to myself, my gosh, you're really pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't, you can't like follow a, a darn train of thought for more than like six seconds. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. Even after eight days of doing it, you know, so that uh, what, what I've come away with from mindfulness meditation is just a, m- a more sort of crystal clear perception of my own you know, my own averageness, you know, the, just noticing the thoughts that enter your head and how they're, the vast majority of them are not intelligent or wise or profound. They're just completely mundane. Oh, I'm bored. I'm hungry. You know, just, or just rehearsing social situations. Oh, I should have said this then. That would have been amazing. Or, you know, just, just the total, you know, automaticity of your own mind. So, but, but I think certainly people do become, people get pretty into themselves over mindfulness. Um, on the other hand, I do think some people like any skill, some people get so good at it that if they're just honestly reporting how good at it they are, they can sound like a narcissist, right? Like, if LeBron James honestly describes how good he is at basketball without a shred of inflating the truth, he just sounds like an asshole, but he's just being correct, right? So I, I think there have to be some people like that and to distinguish them from the, you know, how does one distinguish someone who really has mastered the skill from someone who is just deluding themselves and engaging in this spiritual narcissism? You know, it's a really good question. And not only that, but how, you know, what if there is someone authentically, as there are in this world, people who are enlightened to a, mm. to a very high degree? I mean, they are. They legit are. Just like you said, there was a brawn exists. There are people who legit are enlightened. But the point is, you know, by, it's like saying also, well, there, do, there exist geniuses, you know, that exist. But the point is, these are in, being a genius is very rare. Uh, it's quite likely you're not the genius. It's quite likely mm-hmm. you're not the enlightened one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, certain, but those who do exist, and those who you know, I think the Dalai Lama is at this very high state, like legit high state of consciousness, um, of of awareness, of compassion. Um, when I listen to him talk, I don't I don't get narcissistic vibes, but I want him to to be awesome. I want him to not shy away from being awesome. I want him to own it. I want him to like, you know, strut down the runway <laughs> Sorry, you know, with confidence, you know, um, that's, you know, so, um, I want that in certain people, but, um, I think that, you know, for most of us, I think we need, um, we need great humility. If we, if we think that two or three weeks of a silent retreat, that's more, that's more what I'm challenging. You know, the what you know, the ones that like, you know, like a month, they've meditated using Sam Harris's app or something. And then they'll say, um, now I'm enlightened. <laughs> now I'm, now I'm, you know, the Supreme leader. And then they start a cult, whatever, mm. but that's more of what I'm challenging. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah, sure. 